Welcome back to my YouTube channel everybody. This week I am taking it back to basics. I was painting a piece of furniture this week and I filmed it and I want to do a kind of beginners where do I begin with starting to paint video. Now that most of the hardware shops and a lot of shops are starting to open back up I'm noticing a lot of people tackling some projects around the house which is absolutely amazing and I'm making this video for absolute kind of beginners so if you've ever been like I really want to paint my locker, my cabinet, my kitchen, whatever but I haven't a clue where to start I don't know the difference between gloss, satin, chalk paint um, do I prime, how do I prime and what is a good prep I am going to just cover some basics in this video I have a little cabinet that I painted or well, a locker that I painted this week and I'm going to talk you through how I did it and I'm also going to give you some tips for furniture painting I have painted everything from my fridge, my kitchen nearly every piece in this house is painted and thrifted I've made a lot of mistakes so at the end of the video I'm going to talk through some common kind of um, mistakes as well. So I'll put timestamps in the description if you want to just learn about prep, prime or paint. Um, so let's get into the video. The first thing I do with every piece of furniture is I give it a good cleaning and a good sanding before painting. I always say that you wouldn't put makeup on a dirty face so why would you put paint that you spent your hard earned money on on a dirty piece of furniture. I use either sugar soap or crud cutter to clean away any dirt and grime. Although a piece may look like it's clean, there is going to be a layer of grease and grime on it. So make sure to give it a good clean. Prep doesn't take that long. I think some people fear a good prep, but generally half an hour and I've given a piece a good prep. I also remove any knobs and hardware that I don't want to get paint on and this gives it just a nicer finish. You can also use some frog tape to tape up the sides. For this piece the drawers actually didn't come out. Also this isn't an original mahogany piece, it's kind of like a replica. There was a stamp on the back for 2007, it's like a veneered finish. I use a medium grit sandpaper to gently scratch the surface so I'm not sanding this back bare but I want to give the paint something to grip onto so I'm lightly sanding it down. I'm also going to hoover away any of the dust but then wipe it down with a lint free cloth just to remove any remaining bits of kind of sand and dust. For my piece I am going to be using primer because it's like a veneer finish and it's going to give me more adhesion. It's also going to block any of those little tea stains that were on this piece. It's going to stop them from showing through. So I love primer. Again when it comes to makeup you wouldn't put it on a dirty face and you get a better finish when you put on some primer. So the same goes for furniture painting. So you can do, generally I will do one coat of primer. For this I actually did two coats because I did notice that some of the tea stains from the teacups um, were showing through and were bleeding through. So I did two coats on this but generally you only need to do one. When it comes to picking your top coat or your paint essentially, it can be a minefield and I remember when I was a beginner I started off using chalk paint and I wasn't aware that there was other finishes as well. So you've got a satin finish, you've got eggshell, you've got gloss and then you have like matte chalk finishes. When you start using chalk paint, I don't know if it was maybe a sales pitch at the time, they marketed it as a, oh, you don't have to prime, you just lash it on. However, you still had to seal that. So I noticed people advertising it as this quick and easy paint, revamp something, however, I had a lot of disasters when it came to chalk paint and it's not to bash chalk paint, I've seen people do great things with it, but 
do bear in mind that you do still have to prep with it and you do have to seal it so you have to put some sort of varnish or like sealer on it when it comes to satin eggshell gloss they all have built-in sealers so the likes of I have a cabinet right here in front of me and um, once I prime this and I do two coats of the top coat so this was eggshell and um, once it's dried, it's dried absolutely smooth, it has a sheen and you can wipe it down. So my preference is satin and eggshell. I'm not a fan of gloss just because it's really high sheen and I like just a semi sheen. I'm not overly fond of things that are really matte either but this is just personal preference. I like to be able to wipe things and I find that satin and eggshell are so much easier to clean and I can wipe pieces down by just using like fairy liquid solution and just dust them and keep them clean that way so my personal preference from all of the pieces I've painted in my house is satin and eggshell and they're also easy to strip compared to chalk paint chalk paint is an absolute nightmare when it comes to stripping so just bear this in mind if you do change pieces often and repaint them um, it's easier to strip the likes of satin gloss and eggshell compared to chalk. I hope that takes the mystery <laughs> out of the different types of finishes. So when it comes to kind of matte, you're thinking of like the chalk kind of stuff, you have to seal that. And then the things that have a sheen is your satin, eggshell and your gloss. So it's all personal preference and what you prefer in your house. And mine is satin and eggshell. When it comes to applying my top coat, I generally do two coats and then I just follow the drying times. But just bear in mind that when you are painting a dark piece to white, white does have a tendency to be like a little more transparent and you will have to do an extra coat sometimes, not all times, but some brands of white shades, you may have to do an additional coat. Now for this piece, I did only have to do two coats of white to get the coverage that I wanted. When it comes to paint brands, there are tons on the market and I encourage you to try as many as you can to find your own kind of favourite. Some of my favourites are, I love the Colour Trend Satin, I love their eggshell as well, the Authentico Eggshell um, Resant. I, d I have used some of their matte actually, um, I've used it in the garden. I actually like their matte even though I'm not a fan of matte finishes. Um, I like their eggshell, I have their eggshell in my kitchen. Faro and Ball Estate eggshell is beautiful but it's pricey but you do get a lot in a tin but Faro and Ball is, I am a fan but it is a bit on the pricey side. I have tried the likes of Annie Sloan and some other like chalk paint brands however i only use these for decorative things so if i'm painting like a mirror or if i'm doing something fun with glass jars i'll use chalk paint for that but when it comes to like a piece of furniture anything that i have painted in chalk paint has discolored over time and now it could be down to i didn't prep it because i did start I was a beginner with them but I do have a TV unit in my living room and I don't like the finish of it and how it has worn over time whereas anything I've painted in satin and eggshell has totally lasted time. 
So another benefit actually of chalk paint is you can get some really cool effects. Um, you can also get like good effects with satin and eggshell, but I find you can blend and do different techniques slightly easier with chalk paint. So it all comes down to what you're painting, what finish you want. Do you want it to be durable? Do you want it to be easy to clean? Um, maintenance, do you have children in the house? Things like that. So that all factors in in your decision into what finish you're gonna pick for your paint. I want to talk about cure time and I've probably mentioned this on a couple of videos where I have painted furniture. So you've got touch dry time and then you've got actual recoat drying time and then you have cure time and not all tins, um, actually most tins won't say what the cure time is but you're looking at like a week for certain brands. Um, you could be looking at up to a month for other brands and you can get this information if you ask for like their chemical breakdown sheet or you can just ask the brand and um, drop them an email customer service. So basically I painted this locker and I think I said it was actually on the tin touch dry within half an hour. So that's touch dry and it's very tempting to lash on another coat when something is touch dry. However, I've had made the mistake where I've put on a second coat and I've lifted off the first one. So I do recommend patience. And you have the recoat time. So if it's like two to three hours, do stick to that. It's very tempting to be like, I'll just put on another coat. Um, but to try not to do that, stick to the recoat time. It's there for a reason, paint is chemical um, based. So they, there's obviously some sort of science to it. So don't be tempted and stick to the recoat time. And then you've got cure time. So for example, I have painted this locker. Now it's not mine, I don't get to keep it. I'm painting it for a friend and I used it for this video. But you'll see that I popped a little basket on top to style it and I put like a little cup. However, you will notice that I don't recommend doing this for about minimum a week. I would protect your piece, like you can use it, um, but be extra careful because if you bang it or put a cup on it or put something heavy on it. So for example, if I put glass on top of this, like there's a chance that when you lift the glass off, it could peel the paint if it's not cured. So I recommend just give it a week, like you can pop it, it can go into the bedroom, it can sit there, but don't put any kind of cups down on it for like a week minimum. Um, you can even just put a blanket over it. Um, so it's kind of just that time between after it's paint job where it's just that extra bit sensitive to dings and bashes and then once it's cured you'll notice that it's a bit more durable. I find I get questions where um, someone might say I painted my door and it chipped within a week. Um, maybe they banged the hoover off it and that could be possibly it didn't have time to cure before it got that bang or some of my I know in the beginning when I painted things I was so eager to use them and like that I would change a knob but I noticed like the paint would come with it and um, so just something to bear in mind is the cure time and also if you're painting for um, like a commission let's say so if you're painting something I wouldn't transport it for like a week or two weeks because if you paint it and it's like freshly painted and it's been dry a day then when you go to transport it in your car, van, whatever um, and if you get some dings it's going to be likely that you'll get some scratches and some peeling and chipping. Um, so definitely wait a week before you transport your piece. Or wrap it up super well, lots of bubble wrap or blankets or something. I'm not going to get into stripping paint in this video but I do have a video where I stripped back a blanket box. The blanket box was full of gloss paint and I gave it a makeover and I love it, it's still there, ends my bed. I will put a link and a card to it here if you want to check that out if you do have questions about stripping paint but basically I personally prefer stripping with a heat gun and you have to be careful of the age of a piece and make sure that there's no lead paint. You have to be extra careful if it's an old piece. And I try and stay away from chemical stripper. I have experimented with, with some bio strippers. Um, I tried two, like, not that they're non-chemical, but they're eco-friendly strippers and they weren't amazing. So I always go back to the heat gun. So that's just my two cents on stripping, but again, that's another thing to get into, but I'll link to that video. I have a free download when you sign up by email. I have this furniture guide 
and it just breaks down what I have said to you. Um, you could even just download it, keep it on your phone, and then when you're going to paint a piece, everything that I have said applies to all projects. So whether you're painting your kitchen, I still recommend you to prep, prime, and then put your top coat on, and then cure time. I recommend this for nearly all pieces. Obviously when you're painting the likes of metal, there's some different things, um, glass, but when it comes to a nice piece of furniture, whether you're painting a chair, a cabinet, like a kitchen, whatever, I recommend them three steps. So if you've ever dropped me a message in my DMs, I'm so sorry, I can't reply to all of them, but that is the answer you'll get is prep, prime and paint. Um, so if you download that guide, just save it to your phone and then you can use it for your reference whenever you go to paint a piece because it's a flip, applicable to most pieces you're gonna paint. I just wanna quickly touch on some painting disasters that I have had over the years and it's the reason why I am so prep and prime. Um, I have in the past painted pieces that I've gotten from the charity shop and I skipped the primer and the paint looked lovely and then when I went to apply some varnish I had bleed through and the whole piece was ruined and I was disheartened and I was like what? I've also painted pieces that have chipped really easily. My doors chip really easy, I have to redo them. So even though a paint might say oh no need to prime, no need to prep, just stick it on. I would still do it because you end up in the long term having to go back over and redo pieces. So save yourself the headache and yeah, the most common kind of paint disaster is getting bleed through. So when you're painting the likes of mahogany and also when you're painting knotty pine, those little knots in the wood need to be primed because they bleed through. The wood is um, it has oils and stuff in it that bleed out. So if you don't use certain primers, it will bleed and cause you to have to go over it again in the future. And with that said, I sometimes get messages from people and like, I really wanna do this, but I'm afraid I'm gonna mess up. And it's almost like they're looking for permission and I give you permission. If you say I wanna paint this, I'll be like, Follow them three steps and go for it. Um, and don't be so hard on yourself. And it's the only way you're gonna build confidence. If you think you're gonna mess it up, you're probably gonna mess it up, if I'm being blunt with you. But if you think, you know what, I can have a go at this, and if it's not perfect, that's grand. I think sometimes we want things to be absolutely perfect. And I'm telling you now, my first pieces that I've painted, I look back, they were not perfect. They were nowhere near perfection. Um, but that's how you grow, learn, and start out on pieces. Do you know what? If you've got a thrift item, if you've got an old chair, something that you don't mind if you mess up, maybe you paint it and a month later you, re you repaint it, you strip it, and you paint it again. Um, you've learned how to strip and you've like advanced your technique and you've practiced. So I give you permission to just go and do it. And like I said, if you think you're gonna mess up, you probably will, cause that's your mindset. Um, I'm getting very open now. Um, but if you're willing to make a few mistakes, build your confidence and just have fun with it, you'll be buzzing. And I guarantee when you put the paintbrush down and you are happy and you stand back and you style it, you are going to be buzzing. And you also save an absolute fortune in your house. My whole house is furnished how I want it with thrifted items that they're normally flea. Um, yeah, I'm a good skip driver. <laughs> So that is me for this week. If you found this video valuable, please do share it. If you know someone who maybe wants to paint something but they're like, I don't know where to start, send them this video, get them to download the guide and get them cracking on and painting and getting that creative buzz. <laughs> that is me, cheeky thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.